Lima 2035 is a public-private people partnership led by SIP, an international research center, in collaboration with active holding company Grupo Alimenta and a rapidly growing number of citizens. And our mission is to disrupt food deserts globally, but starting at home. And boy, do we have a desert to disrupt. Lima is the world's driest megacity. It is set in the northern tip of the Atacama Desert and receives about a quarter of an inch of rainfall per year. Our landscapes are often compared to Mars, and yet we're home to 10 million people, the great majority of whom are first and second generation immigrants, farmers who came to Lima driven not by the dream to prosper, but by the urge to survive. And this is what their homes look like from above. Self-made development in bare desert houses millions of these domestic refugees. Two million alone lack access to running water. Hunger and malnutrition are endemic problems. Access to green areas, an unimaginable luxury. What could drive a person to choose San Juan de Miraflores as her home? What is that invisible nightmare compared to which this place can offer the comfort of a dream? Sara Torres moved there when it was nothing but bare sand, holding her newborn baby wrapped on a blanket, the only possession she could take with her that night. Alone and too poor to afford housing in Lima, San Juan's desert offered Sarah the only refuge she could find from domestic violence. Her family lived hundreds of kilometers away in the countryside. She left her farm years earlier to ease her heavy financial burden and ventured alone to Lima in search of a job. She was only 14. The story of Sarah is the story of millions of migrants driven to Lima, not by hopeful dreams of prosperity in the city, but by desperate nightmares of misery in the countryside. I understand their story because I too arrived in Lima fleeing from a nightmare. My family sought refuge in Peru in the 1980s, escaping intolerance for their beliefs in Iran. I was only three and grew up as a refugee in a poor desert city south of Lima. Peru was no dream back then. We endured years of internal terrorism, 3,000% hyperinflation and a dictatorship, but we were free and I grew up happy and Peru became my home. I understand why Sarah and my parents would choose the Peruvian desert as their home. Harsh as it may be, it offered comfort from the trials they left behind. But the history of Lima is marked by one notorious immigrant whose choice I could not understand. Francisco Pizarro could have taken any place of the vast Inca empire as his home. We're talking about the greatest empire on the American continent, the civilization that built Machu Picchu, one of the new seven wonders of the world. Why would he choose this terribly inhospitable desert to settle in? Why not Cusco, the mighty capital of the Inca empire? The solution to this puzzle is that Lima was far from inhospitable back in 1535. In fact, historians describe Lima as a human-made oasis, the first metropolis of the new world. Irrigated agriculture alone spent 23,000 hectares of land, more than two times the size of the entire city of Paris. But there were also food forests and seasonal pastures and other natural ecosystems that allowed sustainable grazing, hunting and gathering. The Lima Pizarro chose as his home was an ancient marvel, a green crown sitting almost magically on the northern tip of the world's driest desert, which makes the Lima of today not a desert mega city, but the new world's Eden desertified by centuries of cultural repudiation, colonial extraction, and a mode of development that enriches the few, leaving the many behind. Our dream is to reverse the corrosive effects of these forces, building upon what we still have, three transformative opportunities latent in the muted remnants of Lima's glorious past. The first of these opportunities lives in our Lomas. Only 10 kilometers inland, dense fog rising from the Pacific Ocean meets the foothills of the Andes, birthing a remarkable oasis. Lomas harvest millions of liters of fog water, greening an area more than 40 times the size of New York Central Park. But they're not the only ecological hackers drawing water from this airborne aquifer. Waterless communities living near Lomas can harvest up to 600 liters of fog water per day, 
with crude plastic nets stretched four meters apart by wooden poles. We've developed advanced technology to harness the power of wind, creating modern day wind farms in the US and in Europe. Why can't we develop modern technology to harvest water from fog, turning lomas into ecological farms that close our water access gap? Designer Alberto Fernandez is helping us answer this question. He won an award envisioning Chile's desert reclaimed for agriculture with fog water harvested by spiraling towers 200 meters tall. Installed in our lomas, each tower could harvest enough water to meet the demands of up to 10,000 people. The second opportunity for Lima's transformation is latent in our 366 huacas. Lost in time and scattered across the dense urban fabric are physical traces of the Lima before Pizarro. The Inca called them huacas or sacred places. Seen from above today, the abandoned archeological sites appear as black holes gravitationally attracting the encroaching urbanization. They occupy close to 5,000 hectares of public land enclosed by walls and threatened by urban pressure. Peruvian architects Jean-Pierre Cruz and Kevin Malka envisioned these sites woven into the fabric of community life with ecological projects that protect their legacy while closing our city's green space deficit. In their view, it is not through walls but through community appropriation that wakas can become sanctuaries again and be protected for future generations to enjoy. And what better way to breathe community life into them than through the binding power of food? Drawing from the urban food hubs model of Washington DC, we're joining forces with Jean-Pierre and Kevin to reimagine wakas as our engines of community development and ecological restoration. We will design them to rebuild our social and ecological capacity to reverse Lima's desertification by reclaiming our local food system from farm to fork. And finally, the third opportunity to transform Lima lives in our culture, the 5,000 year agriculture. New Limeños are the children of two of the world's original homelands of food production, the Andes and the Amazon. Our knowledge of the land is indigenous and ancient. It lives this place, not forgotten, within us in this city. And we're the stewards of a long forgotten treasure, the lost foods of the Incas. At the time of Pizarro's conquest, our people cultivated as many foods as the farmers of all Asia and Europe. More valuable than the gold that left our shores is this biological treasure still waiting to transform our city and the world. Equipped with our indigenous knowledge and our heirloom seeds, all we're missing is farmland. A simple innovation can fill the void. This is how we imagine the world's smallest farm. Covering an area the size of a dining table, this elevated garden bed allows the cultivation of plants, animals, and living soil, creating a circular regenerative nutrient loop. Mixed farming at this scale is possible due to Andean guinea pigs, one of the lost treasures of the Incas. This regenerative superfood requires little space and can upcycle yard trimmings, food scraps, and food waste to yield the nutrient-dense delicious meat. Forget your cricket powder and your lab-grown wannabe meat. This is the sustainable future of protein, and we have the perfect place for these micro farms, our homes. Having no rain in Lima has an overlooked advantage. It makes our roofs flat, able to accommodate dozens of these modules. Beautifully arranged in this concept home are only 12, taking up one fourth of the rooftop. This edible terrace can yield enough food to address hunger and malnutrition for a family of six, or to yield an income two times the minimum wage in Lima. Our vision for the future of Lima's desert slums is one where basic human needs for food, housing, and a dignified livelihood can be addressed jointly from the comfort of a beautiful home. With these three solutions in place, water farms, food hubs, and edible rooftop gardens, this is the future we envision for the Lima of 2035. Regenerative, nourishing, and socially just. Our desertified mega city green again, rebuilt from the ashes of the mighty civilization it once was, 500 years after Pizarro seized her as his home.